What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing something super fun. I can't wait to get into this because it's been on my to-do list for a long, long time. And that is going to be upgrading the stock knuckles on the rear of the Can-Am. So before we get into the repair and step through that, I just wanna show you why this is a problem and why you need to consider changing these out. Let's jump in. Okay, so check it out guys. Here is the problem with this. So straight out of the gate, these things are little more than hot garbage. And if you do any sort of hard riding, I don't care if it's desert, sand, whatever it's gonna be, with the horsepower you've got on your Can-Am, you are going to strip out and wallow out this hole right here. Now, there are some fixes for it, and I have one on here now. So this thing is moving like crazy and it'll feel like you've uh, like you're in a boat and somebody's steering you with an oar on the back end. And this thing is just, um, it just sort of as wallows itself out. And especially with bigger tires and you know more aggressive riding, you're gonna wear this out faster. But within the first 500 miles, this is gonna be a problem. So right now I have the shock therapy uh, double shear kit on here and it also wallowed out. I have 1600 miles on this machine and already this is no good. And I mean, no good. So. I wanted to just show this, and when I get the other one out, I'll show you everything in here. But I'm upgrading to the ZRP. Um, this is definitely, I mean, just look at the difference here. Double shear. And if you've got a machine uh, prior to 2022, 2022, Can-Am fixed this problem. And actually, you can buy the rear knuckle from a 2022 for about 99 bucks uh, per side. So say, you know, 200 bucks, plus you got to get all the, you know, bushings and everything else. So say you're going to be into it, like, $400. A pair of these are going to range between $1,600 and $2,000 to get this full billet, you know, super strong. None of this pop metal. I mean, these things are dense. Pretty awesome. Lots of adjustment. So we'll be able to really dial this thing in and pretty much just pop it into place. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start on this side, on the um, passenger side rear, and go through the process. Okay, so check this out. Look at that. The thing is, that bolt is tight. It's totally tight in there, but that's how much play I have. It looks like this whole thing is just gonna fall off. That's what's steering me down the road right now. And you know, one of the things that helped while I was waiting for these knuckles to show up, they were on back order for a long time, um, was these assault radius rods. I got rid of the Super ATVs that I had, and these I can adjust the toe, the camber, uh, everything on the rear to kind of help clean that up but it was only gonna be a matter of time before this thing just sort of snapped, and that is definitely not something I wanna see, but just, that's unreal to have that much movement. And when you're driving down the road or taking a corner, it pitches the vehicle and it's just really super unsafe. So I can't stress enough, like how important it is, number one, to check that if you've got uh, one of these machines prior to 2022 and you haven't upgraded the rear knuckles, that's gonna be a real problem for you, so just plan on doing an upgrade on it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheel off first and then we'll get the brakes off, we'll get the axle out, we'll disconnect the radius rods and then drop the knuckle and we'll be good to go. So now we're just gonna pop off the uh, castle nut for the rear axle. Get that out of the way. Just start the process. All right, let's go ahead and pop off the uh, uh, rear axle. Apparently, the last time I did this, I put it on a little too fucking tight. So, let's see. There she goes. Oh, man. JP, gotta relax sometimes. All right. That's off. That'll make life a hell of a lot easier. Whew. So, taking off the brakes is gonna be a 15 mil. Get this off of here. You know, again, like most things on these machines, they're not all that hard to work on. Um, you know, I don't necessarily want to break into transmissions and differentials and things like that. 
but we will have some of that on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed. Okay, so we can break out of the way. Knock this guy off of here. caliper, drive line. Okay, so now we've exposed this thing. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take this off. This is a pair of 18s right here. So we're gonna remove those. This one down here, the long one, is always kind of giving me a little grief. I'm probably gonna have to like knock that back with a hammer, but we'll see how it goes today. This thing is wrenched on here as tight as it can go, and there's still that much play in it. This is what you get with the shock therapy kit. You can see how much more this is wallowed out. But you're supposed to drill these out um, and then drop these spacers in here. But the one thing about it is you're just thinning out the wall like crazy. And then you're dropping these guys in here to try to make that back up. But you've still got movement and you know, there's still a chance for it to wallow out. So, you know, while it might be a temporary fix, I'd just say toss these and upgrade. It's just, it's, I don't know. For the effort you have to go through to drill that out and, you know, make sure everything's squared up, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. So, you know, I'd say good job for shock therapy for coming up with a, a short-term fix, definitely not a long-term fix. So one thing I'm probably gonna have to do when this is all done, and again, why I like these Assault Industry uh, radius rods, is since that thing had so much play, I'm probably gonna have to readjust the rear alignment just a touch when this is all done. So, you know, it's as simple as just loosening up the jam nuts and, uh, you know, putting a big crescent wrench on the, um, on the rod and just giving it a twist. There she is, set into position. I'm gonna go ahead and pop all these through. probably but now this guy this lock I don't have enough clearance to pop it back on and you know that's sucks but it most definitely is not gonna go in there unless I were to clean that out so I'm gonna save this Put this aside and see if I'm gonna need it in the future. In the meantime, just make sure that this is really snugged up um, because this is really not very accessible. Um, once you get the wheel back on, you kind of have to take it apart to get to it. So hopefully it'll do what it's supposed to do and I'm not gonna have to worry about it. Okay. Here we are. She is looking dead sexy. I'm gonna get on the other side, get that done, but uh, 
I think that's probably enough for you guys to see. Just really, this is a pretty simple process. You know, give yourself a little bit of time, get out in the sun, have some fun. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, get this thing ready to head out to the desert. Remember, if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and do so. You're gonna love this channel. Not only will we be working on Can-Am, there's another one back there. You can see that one. That's 120 horsepower. This is a 172. So there's a lot that can go on between the two machines. It's nice to have two fairly matching machines around and uh, be able to swap some parts in and out. At some point, we're gonna end up having to switch out the backs of those, but I think that this problem has been more um, on the heavier horsepower machines. I don't know that the 120s have had it as much, but I, I'm not certain about that. So if you do have one, uh, if you've got a 120 and you're feeling that thing kind of wash around, um, you know, leave a comment below. I'd love to see, um, you know, if you guys are having the same issues, but double shear, do it, change it out, make sure that you're safe when you're riding out there. We'll go through a couple other fail points on these machines and uh, what I've done to strengthen it up in an upcoming video. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon. See ya.